Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at exponential graphs. Now with all of these videos, I will link in the description throughout the video uh, the topics that I mentioned that are going to be involved in this, but there are a couple of other topics that are involved in exponential graphs that we're going to be applying throughout this video. Now the question that's on the screen is the type of question that we're going to try and build up to, but we're going to start off with some of the more basic questions to start with and just build our way up to this one. So with that being said, let's get started. <laughs> So the first question that we're going to have a look at is this one here and it says complete the table and draw the graph of y equals 2 to the power of x and when we have this power of x that's what defines our exponential graph and we have something to the power of our x value. Now this falls in very nicely with all the rest of coordinate geometry. Sometimes we're given a table, sometimes we're not. It does happen that with exponential graphs you are a little bit more likely to have a table than say with a straight line graph but for the purpose of this one we are going to have some tables included. Now if we have a look at our table, we've got the values from negative 2 going up to 3 along our x values. And just like with normal coordinate geometry, all we have to do is plug that into the formula to find our y coordinate. Now remember our little formula is up here, so it says that the y coordinate is equal to 2 to the power of the x coordinate. And that's what those y's and x's represent obviously when we're looking at coordinate geometry. So to find our corresponding y value, we just need to figure out this one here. So having a look, and it's always worth checking any that you have been given. So in this particular one here, we've been given the y value for when x is negative 2. And if I stick that into the calculator, we get 2 to the power of negative 2. Now if we put that in, we get a quarter, which is 0 0.25. So just making sure that obviously if you are using a calculator, you're getting the same answer that's given to you in the table. That's going to allow you to know that your methods are going to be correct for the other values there. But not forgetting, and here's where our first topic comes in, that if this was non-calculator, we would have for this one, 2 to the power of negative 1. And obviously that links into our fractional and negative indices, or in this case a negative indice. And I'll link the video to that in the description to make sure you can do this without a calculator as well, but I am going to be using a calculator throughout these questions. So the power of negative 1 just means that you flip it over, you do the reciprocal, and we have a power of 1. So that would become 1 over 2, or 0 0.5. We can put that straight in, 0 0.5. The next one here, we've got 2 to the power of, and our x value this time is 0. So we've got 2 to the power of 0. And remembering anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So our value there is 1. That falls true for the next one. We've got 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. And then for the next 2 there, or the final 2, we've got 2 to the power of 2, or 2 squared, which is 4. And then the final one, we have 2 to the power of 3, or 2 cubed, which is 8. And there we go, we have all our values. As I said, a lot of links here with normal coordinate geometry or draw another graph, so we just need to plot these points. So nice and carefully, negative 2 to 0 0.25, and that's a little bit fiddly for me to get to there, but I'm going to try my best. There we go, so minus 2, 0 0.25, minus 1 we have 0 0.5, 0 we have 1, 1 we have 2, 2 goes to 4, and then 3 goes up to 8. And that is, let me make sure I put it on the right line, just there. Now when it comes to an exponential graph, we're going to draw a nice smooth curve, just like we do when we're drawing quadratics or cubics. So let's just draw a nice smooth curve, not with a straight line, not with a ruler. And there we go, just making sure that you join up all of those points as best you can. So there we go, there is our exponential graph. There's a few things that you'll notice about these exponential graphs, particularly with these simpler ones. You have a y-intercept um, there of 1. Now thinking about the logic here, the x-coordinate is 0 on that point, and anything to the power of 0 is 1. So any exponential graph that's given to us in this way, something to the power of x, is always going to cross through the point 1 on the y-axis. Okay, so something really important to remember, obviously, with these exponential graphs, which you'll see on the next question, particularly if we're going to draw a sketch, it's just a nice, easy point to remember with these exponential graphs. Obviously, that would change were we to make this a bit more of a complex version of an exponential graph, but for the majority of them, they are going to pass through one. Right, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so this question is very closely linked to our first one. It's going to bring up some of the points that I was talking about just then. It says, on the grid, sketch the curve with equation y equals 2 to the power of x. So exactly the same one that we've just drawn. It says, give the coordinates of any points of intersection with the axes. Now, as we saw, that exponential curve 
Um, it started over here in the negative region. It went across and then it started sloping upwards faster and faster. And that's what every exponential curve is going to look like, whether it's three to the power of x, four to the power of x, five to the power of x, they're all gonna basically look exactly the same here. Obviously, if we were to draw them to scale and not as a sketch, you would see this emphasis getting higher and higher on that part of, part of the curve on the positive section. But in terms of a sketch, they're all gonna look just like this one. And we've already mentioned that it crosses through the y-axis. Now again, it doesn't matter if it was three to the power of x, four to the power of x or anything, that is gonna go through the y-intercept at one. And there we go, that's all we need to do for a sketch. So what you're gonna have a little practice at is just making sure that you can fill in those tables and just making sure you're happy to draw a couple of these sketches to start with, and then we'll have a look at some of these harder questions. So here we go, let's have a look at some for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions on the screen for you to have a go at. Now what I want you to do with these is I want you to fill in the tables. Uh, we have two equations here, we've got y equals three to the power of x and we've got y equals four to the power of x. Again, you can use a calculator, but if you wanna challenge yourself, you can do it without. And all I want you to do is draw a little sketch, very similar to mine, again, showing where it crosses through the y-axis. So there we go, there's your two questions. Pause the video there and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so moving on to this first question. We've got three to the power of negative two, and as I said, you could use a calculator here, and three to the power of negative two is one over nine, which isn't the nicest there, and it doesn't matter whether you put that in as a recurring decimal or whether you write it in as a fraction. I'm just gonna write it in as one ninth. On to the next one, we've got three to the power of negative one, which is one third. Again, you could have write that as 0.3 recurring. I'm just gonna leave them as fractions. Zero, anything to the power of zero is one. Then we have three to the power of one, 3 squared for 9, and 3 to the power of 3, which is 27. And again, just drawing a little sketch, as long as it's sloping up in that positive direction, and we have the y-intercept of 1. Okay, so moving on to our next one. So for this second one here, we've got 4 to the power of negative 2. So 4 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 16. 4 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over 4. 4 to the power of 0 is 1. 4 to the power of 1 is 4. 4 squared is 16, and 4 to the power of 3 is four. Well, 16 times 4 again, which is 64. And again, drawing a sketch, you could emphasise the fact that it's going to be sloping up more, but again, just emphasising it crosses through the y-axis at 1. So as you can see, it's a little bit strange because both my sketches look pretty much the same, but again, we're not drawing it to scale, we're just showing the direction that it's sloping in, and also the fact that it crosses the y-axis at 1. So there we go, again, obviously you could have done that ever so slightly differently because you could have put decimals in instead, but obviously that's fine, you should be able to match up your decimals with my fractions there. Right, so let's have a look at a slightly trickier question. Okay, so here we've got a slightly different question. This is the graph of uh, y equals k to the power of x, where k is a positive constant is shown, find the value of k. Now that word constant just means that it is not necessarily a whole number, it could be a fraction as well. So when we're having a look at this, we just need to figure out how we're going to approach it. Now, so we know it's going to be y equals k to the power of something. And we can always write that down just to remind ourselves of that. y equals k to the power of x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try and figure these out. And what we can do is we can pull some coordinates off of our graph. Now we know that with a graph like this, it's going to go through 0, 1. This one's slightly different to the ones we were looking at though, because this one is actually sloping downwards. So something is going to be different in terms of our value of k. And that word there where it says constant gives us a little bit of a hint. It means it's not necessarily going to be a whole number, so maybe k is going to be a fraction this time. And hopefully once we've seen this, we'll recognise that these downward sloping exponential graphs do have a different value in place of k there. Now in terms of how we go about this, we could pick the coordinate 0, 1. Let's just have a look at that one and how we'd approach it. Now we know that 0 is the x coordinate and y is um, has got a value of 1. But if we were to plug this into our formula, we would have 1 as our y value is equal to k to the power of 0. And that leaves it a bit open-ended because we know that no matter what goes in place of that k, we're always going to get the value of 1. So that's not particularly any help to us. So we're going to have to go for a different coordinate. Let's find a different one. Now there's a couple that I can see here, both in the negative region. I think it's a bit difficult to find a good one in the positive region there as they're a bit small. But if we have a look, where does negative one land? Negative one lands at two. So we've got a coordinate there. What about negative two? That lands at four. Maybe negative three. That lands up here at eight. So here we could pick any of those. I'm gonna go for the negative one being at two. So what we have, is 2 as our y-coordinate, so 2 is equal to k 
to the power of our x coordinate there, which is negative one. And again, here is where you have to have a really good understanding of your, well, I wanna say fractional and negative indices, but in this case, it's just negative indices. So again, I'll link that in the description, but this is almost a reverse negative indice. So we have to figure out what value to the power of negative one gives us a value of two. And essentially we just have to reverse that power. We know that a negative power does the reciprocal. Now at the moment, two, is two over one, if we were to write that as a fraction. It always looks a bit weird writing it as two over one, but it just helps to visualize that reciprocal. So if we flip that over, that becomes a half. And obviously it's a power of negative one there, so that means there were no powers involved, so a half is equal to k, or k is equal to a half. Now that's our value there. Let's have a look at maybe if we depict the negative two, how we'd approach that, because we might not have a nice value on the negative one. Now, if it was the negative two, which goes up to a value of four, this one here we're looking at now, then I would, instead of putting these values in, so I'd have four is equal to k to the power of negative two. And again, we can take the same approach. We know that four is four over one. There was a reciprocal involved. So if we flip that over, we get a quarter, which is gonna be equal to not k to the minus two, but just the k squared. Now, after now we've reversed that negative power. And in order to get rid of the k squared, we would now need to square root both sides. So we would have to do the square root of both numbers there, and we would get one over two, which is equal to k. And there we go, we found that value of k, k is equal to a half. So this is really just highlighting a, a different technique that we might have to use with some of these harder questions, where we might just have to pull a coordinate off the graph and sub it into that equation. So these ones are okay actually to approach, but we're gonna have a look at something slightly trickier to this to finish off for our final question. So let's have a look at that now. Okay, so this question here gives us two very specific coordinates on our graph, or three if we consider the one on the y-intercept, which is gonna be crucial for this question. And you're gonna have a practice at one of these questions in a sec, so do make sure you are making some notes on this one. It says here is a sketch of part of the graph of y equals pq to the power of x, where p and q are constants. Again, it uses this word constants here. And this time we have a slightly different equation. We've got y equals pq to the power of x rather than just maybe q to the power of x. And it says find the value of k. Now, this is where this coordinate here on the y-axis is gonna be really important because obviously you'll notice that this one changes the rules for us. It doesn't go through zero, one, but instead it goes through zero, five. Now, that means, and if we think about this logically, and here's our equation, y equals pq, to the power of x. Now whatever q is, as long as we put that power of zero in there, y would have to equal a value of one. Or in other words, q to the power of x, when we put zero in, has to equal one. Now that means that in order to change that into a five, we would have to multiply this q to the power of x part by five. And therefore p must be five, okay? Let's just break that down. We've got p times q to the power of zero has to equal that y coordinate, which is five. Or p times one equals five, so therefore p has to equal five. Now you don't really have to write the working out down there. If you see the logic in that, you can see that p has to equal five in order to shift that y intercept up to that value of five. So let's get rid of this working. Just a little bit of logic there. So we'll have a look at this now. So we've got p equals five. Now if we rewrite this equation then, we now have y equals p which is 5 and then q to the power of x or 5 times q to the power of x. Now we can go about actually trying to figure this out because we've been given some coordinates. Now we've been given two more, let's highlight this in a different colour, we've got 2 and k and we've got 4 and 405. Now obviously we're trying to work out the value of k, so substituting that coordinate into our equation isn't necessarily going to help us find what we're looking for, which in this case is this value of q, so that we can then go ahead and obviously find that value of k. So if we have a look here, let's plug this coordinate in. So 4 is our x coordinate and 405 is our y coordinate. So if y is 405, we have 405 equals 5 times q to the power of the x coordinate, uh, which is 4. And now we just need to unravel this or reverse the process. So as we are multiplying by five on the right hand side there, we can divide both sides by five. Let's just write this step of working out down. We'll divide by five. And if we divide by five, we can do 405 divided by five, which is 81. And we get 81 is equal to Q to the power of four. 
There we go, we've got something to the power of four equals 81. Now you might know what that is. If you don't, then we're gonna to have to do a fourth root. So we'll do the fourth root of 81, which is equal to three. So there we go, Q has to equal three. And we can write that at the top here. We've got now Q equals three. So we've got our two values, so we can actually now write out the full equation. So instead of having all of this working out, we've now got that Y is equal to P, which is five, multiplied by three to the power of x. And that makes it nice and simple now for us to work out our final value here that we're looking for. So if we look at our final coordinate, we've got two and k. So two is our x coordinate and k is our y coordinate. So plugging that into this equation here, our y equals five, to the power, uh, five times three to the power of x. Instead, we'll have k is equal to five times three to the power of two or three squared. And if we work that out, five times three squared, three squared is nine, five times nine is 45. So K is equal to 45, and there's our final answer. Okay, so a very similar process to what we used in the previous question, obviously subbing coordinates into our um, equation there to find out some missing values, but this one was a little trickier here because we first had to use a bit of logic to find that value of P, obviously looking at the y-intercept there, it had to multiply it by five in order to move it up there, and then obviously we subbed in one coordinate to find out our other missing value, and then use that equation to find this missing coordinate here, uh, which was K in this question. So there we go, hopefully you made some good notes on that, hopefully that was okay, these are quite, quite tricky questions, but I've got one question for you to have a go at to finish off this little video on exponential graphs. Okay, so this question here is very similar to the one that we just looked at. We've just got some different coordinates on our curve and just take note of the fact that the one over here, we have got a bit of a decimal, but don't worry about that. It's just a number and you are using a calculator. So pause the video there, have a go at this question and we will go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so let's go over the answer for this then. So first thing to note is that it goes up to eight on the y-intercept. And that means this time, rather than having that p-value being 5, our p-value is going to be 8. Because q to the power of 0 is 1, and our y-coordinate has to equal 8. So 8 times 1, p will have to be 8. So let's write that down, p equals 8. Writing our equation then, with our value of p, we've got y equals 8 times q to the power of x, or 8qx. Now, what coordinate can we substitute in? Because we have 1 and 18 this time on the lower part of the graph, so that's fine, we can sub that in. So we've got 18 equals 8 times q to the power of 1. Okay, that's fine. Um, we're multiplying by 8 this time, so in order to get that down to just being q on that side, we're going to have to divide both sides by 8. So 18 divided by 8, again you can do that on the calculator, or you could write it as a fraction as well, but this is a calculator question, so we'll stick with using a calculator. So divide 18 by 8, you get 2.25. So we have 2.25 is equal to Q to the power of 1, so we'll just leave that as Q. So there we go, we've got our P value and our Q value, and now we can write our equation. So let's write our equation down. We've got Y is equal to P, which is 8, multiplied by q which is 2.25 to the power of x and again we're trying to find that value of k and in this question x is 1.5 and again y is our value of k so if we substitute those in we get k equals 8 times 2.25 to the power of our x value 1.5 and again all we need to do is type that into the calculator and we get a value 27 and there we go, and there's our final answer. Let's just highlight that. And there we are, our Y coordinate in that case is 27. So there we go, there is some work on exponential graphs, a few different types of questions there, but hopefully you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Don't forget to check the description for all the videos linked in with this, and obviously the rest of the series on some of the coordinate geometry and sketching graphs. But there we go, I'll see you on the next one.